Hi guys, this is Neil. I've been advised to keep this video brief. So what we have here is a short senior management introduction to surfactants. So the first thing I tell my clients, especially the board level folks, when the subject of surfactant comes up, you need to be thinking about a tadpole. That's right, a baby frog, a tadpole. Why is that? A tadpole has a head and a tail, just like the surfactant molecule, right? A hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. And that's what makes a surfactant a surfactant. It's that dual nature of the molecule that enables it to act in the way it does. And you'll often see surfactants represented uh, acting on surfaces or at surfaces, often between oily grease and dirt and the more hydrophilic substrates such as clothing or skin or hair. And it's that dual nature that enables the surfactant to work in terms of lifting off the dirt and emulsifying it and enabling it then to be rinsed away in the shower or washed away in the uh, washing machine or the dishwasher or what have you. Um, and it's that cleaning piece that's really the bulk of the market for surfactants. Cleaning of one form or another, whether it's household or institutional in, in industrial, industrial itself, or of course, personal care cleaning is about three quarters of the market. And then the remaining quarter of that market is the so-called long tail of industrial applications. And that includes things like agriculture, food, mining, oil and gas, of course, paper making, lubricants, uh, a lot going into industrial lubricants, includes metal working fluids, etc. In all those areas, however, in all those markets, the key thing is that it's that dual nature of the surfactant that enables it to work. And so when you're thinking about the business of surfactants, you've got that tadpole image in your mind and you're thinking about, okay, what is the hydrophobe? What is the hydrophile? Where do they come from? What are their supply chains? How do we put them together, right? The process technology. And then how do they act in the application that I'm thinking about? Um, it's very important to have a pretty good understanding then of those individual supply chains for those two pieces, the head and the tail of the tadpole, as they come together to form the surfactant. Um, in terms of Broad market statistics, the surfactant market is around 17 to 20 million tons per year. It's about $40 billion. As I said, three quarters of that is cleaning of some sort with that long industrial tail. So what are they made of? Where do the head and the tail of the tadpole come from? Well, the hydrophile, the head of the tadpole, is really pretty simple. Um, sulfur trioxide and ethylene oxide are a huge, huge proportion of all the hydrophiles used in surfactant production. So sulfur trioxide to make sulfates and sulfonates. And of course, course <laughs> ethylene oxide, easy for me to say, to make ethoxylates of various types. And of course, also going into ether sulfates. So the hydrophiles are, are relatively simple. Hydrophobes are pretty simple also. You've got some big, big hydrophobes like linear alkyl benzene, products of paraffins and benzene, uh, detergent range alcohols of petrochemical and oleochemical derivatization, um, alpha olefin sulfonates. I mean, th those three right there again are just a huge proportion of the overall surfactant market. So it's a, a pretty simple dance card, if you like, of basic building blocks. As you get into things like biosurfactants, which we'll cover in a future episode, there's a, a little more subtlety, but again, the principles are, are very, very simple. You've got those alkyl chains forming the hydrophobic piece. And then for the hydrophile, it's more like carbohydrates that are providing that functionality. So finally, um, I often get asked, what makes a specialty surfactant? And how's that different from a commodity surfactant? Right, because everybody loves specialties, right? And no one wants to be involved with commodities for whatever reason. Well, um, that's to do with this graph. 
I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser here. There's a very simple uh, two axis graph and there's a good place to be on the graph and there is not a good place to be on that graph. And so in a future edition of this little surfactant capsule series, we'll talk about how to get yourself in the good place. Thanks for listening to this five minute introduction to surfactants, I hope it was useful. If you like what you've heard today, sign up to the blog, take a look at our courses and our conferences. I hope to see you soon.